Okay, here we are. We're going to prep for our molar volume lab. You'll be doing this in the next couple of days here. Setup's pretty simple. You'll have a gas collecting tube. So this just looks like a long test tube here, and it's graduated for you. Starts out at zero, and we go all the way down to 50 milliliters. Okay, we'll be using that today. Of course, we have a thermometer. We'll have some string, some six molar hydrochloric acid, so let me warn you about that. That is fairly concentrated hydrochloric acid. If that ends up on your skin, um, please wash it immediately and make sure you keep your safety glasses on at all times. We also have some magnesium ribbon and that's what we're going to start with today. You guys get to use the big boy balances uh, to weigh the magnesium ribbon. So we'll zero the balance out for you. And then we'll place the magnesium ribbon on the balance pan. And we'll find the mass. So we'll do that. Um, it takes a couple of minutes here. Um, even air currents passing through the balance can cause it to change mass. So we have the doors closed. And when the U goes away, we can record that mass as 0 0.0362 grams. Okay, so you'll write that down on your data table. Of course, everyone's mass will be slightly different. Now at this point, I'm going to set my camera down here for you and try to do this. Uh, so you can see it and I can use both hands at the same time. You want to fold that magnesium ribbon over and I'm just going to set that down for a second and we're going to get a piece of string from your spool. Oh, make it maybe um, a foot long. It doesn't need to be any longer. There's no magic number there. And we'll put a little noose on one end. Hopefully you guys can see this. I cannot see the viewfinder in the camera. And then we'll go ahead and attach our magnesium ribbon to that noose and pull tight. So be careful that you don't hypnotize yourself as you, as you create this. Okay? Then we're going to get our uh, gas collecting tube. And we are going to add acid to that until it reaches, oh, the 10 mark, about 10 mils of acid. This is going to be our excess reactant today, so if you have a little more or a little less, it's not going to make a big difference in the experiment. So you can see that's filled up to about the 10 mark. Okay. We'll then add distilled water and for this I want to hold this tube at a slight angle and add the distilled water so I don't disturb the acid too much at the bottom. So I'll try to do that for you. And the acid being denser will settle to the bottom and we'll fill this close to the top maybe to about that point. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the water level in there and at that point we'll add our magnesium ribbon and then we'll fill this to the tippy tippy top with distilled water the rest of the way. Okay, so I want it to be overflowing as you can see right here. You guys with me on that? Okay, now I'll put my finger over the top and invert this. So I'm putting my finger over the top, we'll invert this, and we'll place that in our plastic bottle full of tap water. Oops, we'll probably have a little overflow there. And we will rest this on the bottom. And so I'm not sure if you can see it, but the magnesium ribbon is slightly floating in there. And if you watch carefully, and it might be hard to see with our camera here, but the acid is denser than the water, so it's slowly migrating down. And it will eventually come in contact with the magnesium ribbon below. So we'll watch that for a second. And we'll see the reaction occurring. This might take about a minute or two for the acid to make it all the way down. So maybe we'll sit quietly here and listen to a little Van Morrison in the background. I'm not sure if you can see, but we are generating a couple of bubbles there as the acid comes in contact with the magnesium ribbon. Now this is a single replacement reaction, so magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. You should be able to write the balanced equation for that. The intensity of the bubbles are increasing, as you can see, and we'll follow the gas collecting tube up, and maybe you can see at the top we are collecting a little bit of gas there. 
as it displaces the water. We'll be quiet again so we can hear Van Morrison. And the reaction will take, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes to complete. And we'll be measuring the volume of gas collected when that magnesium ribbon has been consumed. So you can see it slowly displacing that water and filling up our tube. Now this tube can only measure a total volume of 50 mils. So we have to hope that the amount of magnesium ribbon we used will um, be enough so that we don't collect any more than 50 mils. If not, we won't be able to measure the volume of the gas collected accurately at all. So right now we're at about 25 milliliters of gas collected. We're just passing 30 right now. And let's see how far. Well, we have a little ways to go before we get to 50. And the reaction is still proceeding. You see we still have some magnesium ribbon there that's reacting. Once again, we need that to stop, hopefully, uh, by the time we get to 50. It's slowing down a bit here. Let's see where we're at. The magnesium ribbon, there's still some left there reacting might be difficult to see through the bottle here. It just released itself from the string and it looks like the reaction stopped. So we are less than 50. We need to make the water levels inside this container, inside the uh, gas collecting tube, and the water level in the container the same to measure the volume accurately. So I'll drop this down a little bit and I may need to add a little bit of water to this so that the levels are the same. If you need to do that, you can easily do that by getting some tap water in a beaker. And we can add water to where the levels inside and outside are the same. If you add too much, you can just lift this up a little bit. So I'm not sure if we can see this very well, but the levels are the same and I would read the volume to the nearest tenth of a mil. Okay. Once you have that volume recorded, then you'll need to get the temperature of the water. Of course, you'll do that by adding your thermometer. Now remember, if the thermometer doesn't move, that simply means that the water is at room temperature. Do not think the thermometer is broken. So after that's been in there a couple of minutes, you can record the temperature. You'll want to convert that to Kelvin on your data table. And then you'll want to read the bar barometric pressure. Maybe we can go over to the barometer right now and take a look at that. So we'll give you a quick tour of the room here as we make our way to the barometer. And we can see the mercury level on the barometer is right about there. Okay, so I'll do that again for you. Mercury level is right about there. So we have 600. 10, 20, 30, 40, looks like about 644 millimeters of mercury today. You'll record that on your data table and then you'll complete the lab report. Okay, enjoy!